I'm standing on the bed of a lake gone dry in a four-year Nevada drought. These animals are mustangs, wild horses, and they seem curious about me. I'm certainly curious about them. My most vivid memories of Nevada feature mustangs. Stallions guarding rocky eminences. Sudden eruptions of territorial violence. Herds flowing over undulating terrain in pastel light. A week later and 20 miles north on the outskirts of Reno, a black foal is born. Spring is the best time for foals. But this little filly has never seen a spring and can't change her birth date. All she can do is shiver and stay close to her mother. Her plight fills me with questions. Will her mother find enough food to produce milk? Will she freeze in Reno's 15 degree nights? How do Mustangs live and thrive in Northern Nevada's barren winters and blistering summers? But wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I began filming Mustangs in the fall of 2015. At first, I was looking for dramatic shots, but soon realized that spectacular fights and stampedes are only fleeting episodes in the lives of Mustangs. The more I watched, the more I questioned. How much do they eat? How long do they live? Does the stallion help raise his foals? Are stallions dangerous? Books gave some answers, but Mustangs themselves were the best source of knowledge. I began watching them several times a week, in different locations, during all seasons, and in all types of weather. Understanding Mustangs became a passion as I began to appreciate their intricate constantly changing social interactions. I was on a journey into the lives of Mustangs as few have seen them. Mustangs reach full adult height at four and live about 20 years. Foals are horses of either sex less than one year old. Colts are males less than four years old. Phillies are females less than four. Stallions are adult males. And mares are adult females. In winter, when Mustangs have thick coats, it's hard to see which horses are mares and which are stallions without looking closely. By spring, the muscular necks and shoulders of stallions are easier to spot. Nevada Mustangs aren't a separate breed because they descend from abandoned and escaped horses of different breeds. They come in many colors, bay, chestnut, palomino, paint, black, and roan which is brown or black mixed together with white. Adult Mustangs weigh a thousand pounds and need to eat the equivalent of 10 pounds of hay each day. They have relatively small stomachs and drift across the landscape eating as they go. Here's a Mustang skull. These incisors are angled outward to clip plants very close to the ground. There are no teeth in this area. These are the molars.
This is the eye socket, and the jaw hinge is behind it. Food is scarce in Nevada, especially in winter. They spend most of their time with lowered heads, seeking green shoots with their strong lips and clipping them with sharp teeth. Mustangs survive on tiny shoots of grass, miniature weeds, and even sagebrush. This bony stallion shows the combined impact of a four-year drought and winter. In contrast, these spring horses are sleek and fat. Adult horses drink five to ten gallons of water a day. They get some water from green grass and snow, but depend on springs and creeks in summer. They usually stay within a four-mile radius of their water. Mustangs get salt and other minerals from natural deposits in the ground. Horses' eyes are larger than the eyes of any other land mammal, and they see in every direction except directly behind. They're very sensitive to movement, but have binocular vision only to the front. They raise their heads and stare when curious. They see much better at night than humans and can see blue and green colors, but not red. Their hearing and sense of smell are better than ours. These colts are using vision, hearing, and smell to investigate me. They approach closely if I stay perfectly still, but shy away at the slightest movement. After an inspection, they move away and ignore me. This lip curling is called the Fleming response, and it enhances their ability to smell. Mustangs don't seem to have much on their minds. They placidly eat, stand, or lie until some physical need or instinct prods them into action. Experts say horses aren't as smart as dogs, or even birds. These horses strayed into an alfalfa field, and then onto a road leaving a mare in the field behind a fence. They're trying to regroup, but can't remember how they entered the road. The fence has them completely baffled. Mustangs have a strong herd instinct and live together year-round. The smallest herd is a family group of a stallion, his harem of several mares, and their foals. Colts and fillies live with their family until about age two. <laughs> family groups are often part of larger herds, ranging around a source of water. Stallions in large herds maintain some space around their families and keep their mares and children from wandering into other families. The location and composition of multifamily herds changes from day to day as mustangs graze over their ranges. Horses are prey animals who shared their prehistoric world with saber-toothed tigers, great bears, and later men who hunted them. Their strongest instinct is to run when surprised or threatened. These mustangs live far out in the desert and flee when they see me at a distance. It's sometimes possible to approach wary mustangs by waiting until they begin eating and then edging forward. But not these. They can only be approached by creeping up ravines and staying out of sight. Stampedes may be led by mares trying to protect their foals, or possibly the fastest, most frightened horse. Panicked herds behave like flocks of startled birds. Individuals run because everyone else is running. Once started, they may run for a mile or more.
In contrast, these animals live on the outskirts of Reno and come right up to beg for food. But all Mustangs are wild in the sense that they are untrained and uncared for, living as their ancestors did millennia ago. Stallions are lords of the desert, the biggest, strongest wild animals in Nevada. They're 1,000 plus pounds of bone, sinew, and muscle. They're tyrannical. This stallion's driving a mare back to his harem. They're protective. I've gotten too close to this foal. Her stallion's coming to warn me away and move her to safer ground. And they're vicious. Stallions are driven by instinct to defeat other stallions, acquire a harem of mares, and father many foals. Competition for mares is intense, and stallions don't reach peak strength until about six years of age. Fighting stallions can inflict grave wounds or even kill one another. Many stallions bear the scars to prove it. This stallion has a big chunk bitten from his side. This one has fresh wounds on his neck. Stallions use aggressive displays to confront rivals without deadly combat. Many challenges and responses center around piles of droppings, known as stud piles. This sequence is typical. Approach, sniff, and display. The prevailing stallion adds his dung to the top of the pile. This heads-up, fluffed tail posture is a warning to me. Stallions don't usually attack humans, but the more I watch, the more I fear them. I approach slowly, avoid aggressive postures, and move quietly away if I make them nervous. Herd stallions are always on the alert. Competitors lurk near herds, looking for an opportunity to dash in and mate or steal mares. They stay between their families and interlopers as they defend an ever-changing space around their continually moving herds. I call this stallion Appy. He's a herd stallion, and he's on a mare hunting trip. His rival comes out to challenge. I call him Lop Ear because part of his ear has been bitten off. They make a display Enhanced with some kicks, and Epi turns away. Now the roles are reversed. Lop ears investigating Appy's filly. Appy arrives and drives him back. Lop turns to protect his mares from Appy. Herd stallions usually prevent their mares and children from wandering too close to other stallions. These colts are about to get into trouble. They've approached the mares of a nearby bay stallion who came out to challenge them. the colt's black father arrives. The two stallions make displays and the bay returns to his mares. Yeah. 
But the Colts aren't safe yet. Their father lowers his head, making a threat display. The Colts know a painful bite is on the way and run back to their own herd. Stallions are the center of gravity when their family is grazing. They keep mares from straying too far with a head down, ears back posture. Plus a little chasing. Panic mares can lead stampeding herds away from threats, but stallions control most other movements. They set or approve the general direction of movement and follow to make sure no one strays. Sometimes they run out to challenge other stallions along their routes. Other times they drive their mares quickly past competitors. Stallions defend their families against all dangers. They often scout roads before allowing everyone to cross. These mares are coming to investigate me. Their stallion places himself between us. I can imagine him saying, stay back ladies, let me handle this. Mares live in family groups. New families are created by stallions who either collect fillies driven from their birth herds or steal mares from other stallions. Families of mares are relatively stable and remain together if new stallions take over their herd. Mares have their own social hierarchy and establish their status with occasional kicks and bites. They'll also attack mares from other families that drift into their space. Mares don't make obvious threat displays like stallions, so it's harder to see which is the top mare. Dominant mares often lead their herds to food or water. Mares can bite and launch vicious kicks without warning. This one's making me nervous. She follows even when I move quietly away and gets very close. Maybe she's just curious, but I don't trust her. Go away. Get away, go away, nice horse, go away. Mares spend their days eating, nursing their foals, and loafing. They're usually eating with their heads down and not as interesting to watch as stallions. Their most important activities inside their body where they're making foals. Mares begin mating at around 18 months of age. They have an 11 month gestation period and come into heat soon after their foals are born. As a result, mares are pregnant for most of their lives. Spring is the most active time for mating, but it also occurs in other seasons. Foals weigh 100 pounds at birth. They can run with the herd almost immediately. Mothers are especially protective of new foals and keep other family members away for the first few days. Mares have two nipples located between their hind legs and may continue to nurse until they have new foals. Foals are born with milk teeth and eat grass in addition to nursing. They take lots of milk breaks. Like human babies, foals need lots of naps. 
Nothing cheers me more than seeing a new foal. Foals gain about 400 pounds in their first year. Colts are playboys of the desert, frolicking and sparring to hone the fighting skills they'll later need to win and keep mares. This colt has the urge and equipment to mate, but lacks experience with females. His half-sister's not in the mood. She runs to her mother. Their father shows proper technique. First, he runs out to confront rivals and clear his space. Then he approaches his mare from the side, where he's less likely to get kicked, and nuzzles her. She seems receptive, so he performs his role in the endless cycle of reproduction. In general, herd stallions drive their colts and fillies away when they're about two years old, which reduces inbreeding, but I've seen lots of variability. Mustangs spend part of the day grooming each other and work mostly on necks and shoulders. They also roll on their backs. This muddy, weedy colt has been rolling in a puddle of water. There's nothing like a good scratch. Hordes of insects arrive with warm spring days. Family members huddle together and chew flies with their tails. This group of many herds, totaling more than 100 animals, has assembled in a bear area where there are fewer bugs. Stallions establish spaces around their families, and soon it's nap time. Expelled colts join bachelor herds until they're strong enough to get their own mares, usually at six years of age. Some bachelors are in continuous uproar as they practice their fighting skills. The matches are mostly playful, but real violence can also erupt. This group includes a colt with a crippled leg. The other stallions seem to protect him. Bachelors have several ways of getting mares. Perhaps the easiest is to pick up fillies who've been driven from their birth herds. This buckskin stallion's approaching a filly. She seems interested in him but her black father's not ready to let her go. The buckskin follows, and the black stallion makes a weak defense. Maybe he senses that it's time for his daughter to leave. Most bachelors hang around the outskirts of herds, 
waiting for the chance to rush in and steal a mare. They could also try to defeat a herd stallion and take over his harem. <laughs> Defeating a herd stallion in his prime is a daunting task. These Mustangs are fearless, aggressive, and skilled at fighting. Here's Lop Ear trotting out to confront a group of bachelors. All but one wisely move away as he approaches. A fine looking paint decides to challenge. They posture and Lop Ear executes a quick, perfectly aimed pivot kick, which hits the challenger in the jaw. Here it is in slow motion. The pivot and kick actually took less than a second, and my natural instinct to fierce giants grows stronger. This old horse was once a powerful herd stallion. Now he leads a solitary life, with birds as his companions. Mustangs are individuals with distinct personalities. This horse is the model of a herd stallion. He moves his family to good feed, keeps other stallions away, and, judging from the arrival of three foals in six weeks, does all that a stallion should do. This odd family includes two scarred stallions, a scruffy scarred mare and her filly. The buckskin's very aggressive towards neighboring stallions, but the bay dominates mating with the scruffy mare. They're in constant turmoil, the white biting trash of mustangs. This handsome paint stallion seems to lack a strong mating instinct. He's been guarding his mares from a gray rival for several days. Meanwhile, his colts are mating with his mares behind his back. This is the saddest thing I saw. At first, it looked like a typical situation. A roan stallion guarding two mares in a filly from a scarred Bay veteran. Then I saw the stallion roughly hurt a foal from the area. Gradually, I realized a terrible truth. The mares ignored the foal. They didn't nurse it, nuzzle it, or protect it. I don't know why. The stallion tried to pick it up and carry it toward the mares, but only hurt it. A day later, the foal was dead. This story isn't over. Here's the veteran hurting one of the mares, not away from her herd, but back toward it. The mare refuses to return, and the veteran follows her. The roan stallion, remaining mare and filly follow. The roan stallion's reign as lord of the desert has been a disaster. He's lost a foal and his harem. The veteran and strong-willed mare are new rulers of the herd. I filmed Mustangs through fall, winter and spring. Now it's early summer. I've learned a lot, but many questions remain. Do mares and stallions feel affection for each other? Do colts and fillies feel sad when they're driven from their families? Maybe they're just dumb beasts coping instinctively. Maybe not. In any case, I love spending time with Mustangs. 
strong, splendid bodies drifting through spectacular scenery. Tender moments and sudden violence. Rhythms of life from an ancient past preserved in the present for those willing to watch.